We will hand things off to you, Coach. Thank you very much. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, I guess, right on time. Um, obviously, another tough weekend, um, you know, game of football. You know, my dad always said half the teams win and half the teams lose every weekend. Um, always got to keep that in perspective. Our kids are uh, obviously looking forward to a great Notre Dame team this week. You know, we didn't play as good as we'd like to play Saturday uh, on the road against a really, really good uh, Miami football team. Uh, I don't think there's any doubt about, you know, their athleticism, their size, and and obviously the way they're coached. Um, obviously, you know, we made some mistakes in, in uh, you know, in, in really all phases um, for that matter and, and, and things that hurt you. Uh, as, the, as the game goes on. I really don't feel any different from what I felt like on game day. Um, you know, a couple calls, you know, obviously questionable uh, as far as penalties and you know, those discipline things that, that drive you nuts as a coach. Um, but we got to do a better job coaching them. You know, there's some you know, disappointing things coaching wise, just things that we know how to do. And it's more of preparation for what you might see, not necessarily what you saw on tape. And I think sometimes you fall into that, that loophole is this is what they do. And when they do something different, you know, we got to know some of the weaknesses that we have, especially when you're playing with a young guy out there. Um, you know, Voss, um, you know, being a you know guy, a new starter, and saw some things really I don't think we practiced enough uh, or emphasized enough. And, um, and again, that's on us as coaches when things like that happen. Um, you know, I'll just start off defensively Saturday. Again, solid performance. You know, three of Miami's four touchdowns were 45 yards or less. Uh, we gave up some of those pop passes to, you know, their tight ends up through the middle, which, uh, you know, we work enough. Um, you know, they really ran four of them. Uh, you guys don't notice the two that we stopped. Um, one of them, you know, Cam Bright did a nice job when he was in there. Uh, Cam wasn't in there enough just, you know, because he's still a little bit banged up, hopefully by 100% this week. But Cam does it the way you're supposed to, a veteran guy. And, and you know, Voss is the smartest, maybe one of the smartest linebackers we have, and it'll never happen to him again. And then we had another one just come, to, come through the line of scrimmage. And, and uh, you know, I think they had some linemen seven or eight yards down the field on, on that second touchdown. Um, that was disappointing to see, um, you know, an RPO style. Uh, off, offensively, you know, Joey Yellen, I think it was a heck of a first start for him. Uh, you didn't know what you're going to get out of him, um, but, you know, was happy with the way he performed overall. Obviously, the fumble, you know, creates one of those short fields for our defense. Uh, another one was on a fake punt that, you know, that uh, obviously I called and we thought we had a great thing going uh, as far as that fake goes. And, and uh, we just don't clean up a block, which I think we can get 10 yards. And, and obviously, you're you know you're taking a risk anytime you do that. But uh, yeah, we took the risk. We thought it was worth it, and uh, we came up short. And um, you know, I, I don't look back and, and and say anything. You know, I don't I don't question the call at all. Uh, you know, I want to be aggressive. But I want to give our you know kids a chance to make plays. And you find out if they're going to make them or not, and then uh, you you move on. But offensively, you know, we got to run the football. Uh, Twenty two yards. You know, disappointing there. There's some details that we just. Uh, haven't cleaned up, um, you know, I don't think our O-line did a great job of blocking them. And again, give those guys a, a credit on the other side of the ball. Uh, they're, they're an athletic crew that, uh, that you know, did some things up front. And then special teams, you know, our kicking game, you know, for the most part has been as, as good as it's been, you know, in the last several years, in my opinion, our punt team, you know, Kess is continually kicking in the end zone. And then his four for four, uh, which I said after the game, we got, you know, we got to turn two of those four into touchdowns instead of, you know, kicking them. Um, and uh, you kind of go from there. So, but we faced a great Notre Dame team, number three in the country, coming into our house, uh, coming to Pittsburgh. We know it's always been a good game. Uh, it's a game our kids will look forward to. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're talented across the board. You know, I'll talk offensively, defensively. Haven't watched a lot of special teams at this point, um, but they are big, strong, and physical. Uh, a typical Notre Dame football team. Um, you know, they base offensively out of two tight ends. They're going to put their two tight ends in. The Trumbull kid, number 24, is a physical great blocker, their starter. Um, you know, but really they got three tight ends that, that uh, do a lot of work in there. Obviously run by Ian Book and old Tommy Reese, old former quarterback uh, that I faced several times in the past as their offensive coordinator and has really done a nice job, you know, putting things together over on offense and, you know, got them to their 4-0, you know, number three ranking. Defensively, Clark Lee. Uh, an old, old ACC uh, linebacker coach at Syracuse does a nice job. He's, a, you know, based out of a 4-3. And again, up front, they're just very sound across the board. Their safeties are active in the run game like our safeties are. So they make a lot of tackles. And um, you know, we're going to have to we're going to have to play our best to, to get a W on Saturday. Questions? Yeah, Pat, last week you had kind of Davis and Joey kind of vying for that job. Do you kind of go in this week knowing jo Joey's the guy? 
you know, right now I do, but you know, we're gonna we're gonna go into it like we normally do. You know, we got a lot of confidence in Davis as well. Joey, like I said, you know, loved what I saw. Uh, Coach Whipple loved what he saw as well. Um, again, he's gonna be much better that second round. I mean, we missed a couple of throws. Uh, I love his patience in the pocket. Um, but Davis is only gonna get better. He's gonna have a better week of practice this week than he had last week. Again, you know, just getting those reps. Um, and he had, you know, you know how it is in a backup now. I mean, first, you know, five games of the season, you know, Kenny's taking all those reps. And last week, Kenny didn't take a rep. Um, and then, so, you know, those backup quarterbacks, um, I mean, you see what happened last year with a backup quarterback, you know, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you see what's the difference when, when Big Ben's out there all by himself and, and, and running the show. Your backups don't get many reps. And, and we probably give them a few more reps than you get when you're in the NFL. Uh, but those guys are going to get better every week as we move on. And, and then we'll see where, you know, we'll see where Kenny is. I mean, we didn't travel Kenny because it was the best thing for him to uh, just, you know, rehab and, you know, sitting on a plane for two hours and, and swelling and all that stuff, you know, was not going to be the best thing for him. So, you know, we wanted to bring, you know, Captain Pickett with us, but it was the best thing to keep him here, which he made a lot of headway uh, over the weekend uh, instead of standing out that thing for four hours, you know, during a game. So, um, you know, so we'll, we'll see how they practice this week as far as quarterbacks. And is that an advantage you think to have that, you know, where Joey has to still win the job, he still has to stay sharp, that that's, uh, it's good to still have that competition there? Yeah, I think anytime you have competition at any position, there's some positions we don't have as much competition as we'd like. Um, you know, the D-line, we have a lot of competition going on every week. It could be a different starter out there. Those guys are competing and there's, there's guys that can go in and play. You saw Desmond Alexander go ahead and play, play inside a three technique and he looked good as, as well as he looked at end. Um, so there's certain positions you have, you know, you have that competition. There's something you don't, you know, some you don't. And really through the first five games, I mean, Davis and, you know, and, and, uh, and Joey were getting, they were splitting reps with the two. It's like trying to get three quarterbacks ready because you're not sure who that guy is. And then last week we were able to kind of see what a practice, you know, uh, you know, full practice with more reps for both of them uh, looked like. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, I think the competition is good. Sorry, I know you've been wanting to run the ball all year, but how much more difficult is it when you know when you've got a, a new kid back there under center and the defense is thinking, well, they're probably going to try to run the ball to get this kid comfortable? I mean, how much harder is it when you Yeah, you know, we, we obviously – you're kind of breaking up a little bit, so I hope I'm answering the whole question because I think the beginning got muffed out and so did the end there. I don't know if you're on Jerry's, Jerry's house. I don't know if you were Jerry at his house today. Uh, but, uh, you know, the um, – um, you know, the run game's got to get better. And, you know, I don't think we blocked very well. You know, for the first game, I'd say, you know, like we didn't, we didn't win the line of scrimmage more at all. And we, you know, we've had some decent games run-wise where I think the two previous games, we outrushed the opponent. Uh, this game, we obviously didn't, um, which was disappointing. But we didn't block them very good up front. We didn't give our tailbacks a whole, a whole lot of time. Obviously, you know, Sibley early had some, some lanes to run through, um, some lanes that, you know, my, my old butt could probably run through. And he did a nice job at, at, at carrying up through there. Um, and um, but the, the, the holes closed fast as the game went on and we didn't do we didn't do a great job blocking. So um, I think it'll be a wake up call in that room that we've got to we've got to you know, we've got to get on them. We've got to block them. And again, it's not going to be an easy task against one of the top run defense in the country. And they're big, they're physical and, you know, they're more, you know, we're more of an attack team. They're more of a read and react up front with their with their D line. And, and they're going to they're make it hard to, to rush the ball as well. So we're going to have to be we're going to have to be really good up front. Yeah. Uh, um, I understand that Notre Dame, <clears throat> excuse me, was recruiting Jordan Addison as a D back, and I understand why you want him at wide receiver. Do you think? Do you think he'd he'd, he'd become a go-to wide receiver halfway through his freshman year? Isn't he already a go-to receiver? I, mean, I think we go-to. I'm saying, yeah. more times you can target him um, without you know four DBs covering him. Um, you know, it seemed like a lot of times in that game they they weren't pressing him. They you know they pressed everybody else except Jordan uh, as that game went on for whatever reason. Um, but, you know, Jordan's a go-to guy right now, and, and uh, you know, we'll continue to try to get him the ball without wearing him out either. Some other guys got to step up, and, you know, we got a lot of confidence in Taysir and Jared and, and, uh, and, and DJ Turner. So, uh, you know, we've got, we've got to spread the ball out. Or, you know, if you got one guy you're throwing it to all day, you got problems. And, and Joey has the ability to do that, uh, and so does Davis as far as spreading it out and, and you know, looking at what they're supposed to do coverage-wise. Uh, you mentioned the problems with the offensive line, and you were talking. You, you were talking about how you guys need to do better. What are some things that you've identified specifically that they, that as a group, they have to do better, or are there specific guys that you're like, hey, this spot has to be better because there's certain guys who are carrying the line, or maybe certain guys who aren't. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to talk about certain guys, but you know, it's just you know, every play it might be one breakdown. But we've got to get more movement up front. We got to stay on blocks. We got to sustain blocks. I think that's a big thing, Chris. Is sustain, sustaining blocks uh, to give your you know, you can be on a guy, but you got to finish the block. Um, and we we didn't do a good job finishing. And again, give those other guys on credit. They're you know, they're being coached on the other side to disengage and get off a block. So uh, good job by them. But you know, we got we got to you know, we want to be better than that. Coach, defensively, you talked last week about trying to get a little more rotation at cornerback. How do you feel your staff did this week with that? And what did you see from guys like A.J. Woods who maybe got a little more time on the field? Yeah, I'm not seeing any mouth. I'm not sure who's asking the question, but uh, so I apologize for not using your name. But, uh, um, you know, I, I was happy with A.J. Woods. Um, you know, he really came in and I think he took 41 snaps. And, you know, that was, you know, and again, every week it's, you know, you're plugging a hole here or there and, and like I said, he had a great week of practice and, and uh, deserved it. I think he was kind of, you know, the weeks before thinking he wasn't going to get the game and, and, and maybe just wasn't motivated. But when we said, hey, listen, you have to. We need you. we got to have three corners. He really stepped up. He had a great tackle on an outside run uh, in space that I thought was outstanding and did a good job in coverage. So he's going to get better every week. I know it's hard to, you know, I know it's hard as a defense. You want to keep your best guys out there as long as you can, but we got to keep them fresh. So I think that rotation at cornerback went well, and I think it's just going to make us better as we move on. Um, throughout the rest of the ACC. Pat, it was uh, 10 penalties and 10 different kinds of penalties. How do you go about coaching that situation up? You know, we got to do a good job, you know, detail-wise. I mean, I can go through each one of them. And, you know, some of them aren't penalties, I can tell you that. Um, but, um, you know, we had a hands to the face to uh, – we had the hands to the face and we got called for it. I'm sure you guys go back and watch the tape. I watch the video pretty good. Um, but, you know, it's tough to make all those calls out there, so I'm not whining. Um, but, you know, there's some things that just set us back that you kind of go, you know, should have been 10 penalties. Um, but, um, you know, when we chop a three technique, when he comes through, we kind of got a high low on him. It's, it's like, you know, you, you don't expect to do that. That's, those are things it's like um, you expect freshmen to do stuff like that. Um, so we, we just got to be cleaner. And, uh, and we, we get too close. You know, Shockey is busting his tail down the field and, and we, you know, and he just gets too close to the return of the one time. I mean, there's things like that that, um, we we'll just continue to coach, and it's something different every week. Uh, you know, you have a roughing passer one time last week, and then all of a sudden this year, you know, this week, you know, John Morgan's got a chance to take his head off the one time, and he held up. And it was like, you know, you just, you know, those we've got to learn from those mistakes, and we've, and we've got to do a better job coaching it and making sure it doesn't happen. But sometimes you don't see it in practice, and, you know, some of those, you know, three technique on the scout team's not screaming through the line of scrimmage and, and unblocked and, and or at least not fully blocked. And, you know, you hope your, your tailback's not in that position, but he was. Um, so there's some things that, you know, it happens like that on some of those plays, whether it's running down on a punt team, um, you, know, you know, I thought the DeMar Hamlin kind of a trip up on a, on a you know, and again, there's not a better cover guy back there than, than DeMar Hamlin. He does a great job and had a couple of PBUs, but, you know, they kind of tripped up feet there. You know, I don't know what happened, but, you know, those are, that's how the ball rolls sometimes. Pat, with uh, Keyshawn Camp not traveling two weeks in a row now, I mean, how frustrating is that for him and for you guys, you know, given that, you know, he had that, that injury last year and, uh, you know, when he's on the field, he's, he's producing. Yeah, there's, you know, it's obviously frustrating for him. You know, again, luckily we have some guys in there. I mean, you've seen DeAndre Jules play a lot more football and he's a baby. I mean, he's just, he's just learning what to do in there and, and um, you know, and hopefully he gets better every week, but uh, you know, you know, Keyshawn right now is day by day. You know, I will give you a little bit. I always tell you if somebody's out, I'm going to tell you he's out. Uh, Grant Kerrigan um, will be out for the year with the shoulder. Um, and, uh, and Nate Temple as well, uh, who was really coming on as a defensive end and got hurt a week ago on the kickoff team and weren't sure what was going to happen with it. But late in the week, he, you know, they both got a little, you know, uh, fixing of their shoulders. And uh, so we'll lose those two guys for the year. And again, the tight end spot's been a you know, it's, it's, it's hard to run the ball when you don't have tight ends. And, and really, Danny Morega's done an outstanding job. I think he's a physical guy, and he gets better every week because he's getting all the reps in practice. Um, and, you know, so we're, we're, you know, we're a little short on the tight end thing, which, you know, uh, we can't go get a free agent. I wish we could. And with, with Wendell Davis and Lucas Kroll, are those guys still in the <coughs> not season-ending yet territory? Not season right now, but, you know, it's, it's, it's taken a while, and, you know, we'll see. Um, you know, it's, it's not, I've been told not season ending. So uh, we'll just continue to uh, say our prayers at night before we go to bed and, uh, and hope those guys get healthy quick. Pat, you know, I mean, 16 days ago, you're undefeated, you're up late, and, you know, NC State goes down the field, and now you're three and three. How do you and your guys sound visibly frustrated? I mean, they're frustrated because it's not like you're getting blown out. These are, these are small increments. How do you keep a team mentally up when 
the thing when things sort of shift like that? Well, you got that 24 hour rule where you got to let it go. And, you know, our guys love to play the game. You know, I think we got great kids. And I think, you know, again, they, they've come back every time so far. And, and I don't expect it to be any different. So, you know, just, you know, keeping them locked into what the task at hand is. And, and again, you got a number three team in the country coming into your house. Um, and, and you're actually going to have some parents that will get to see you in Heinz Field. Uh, I know it's not a big crowd, but it's something. And it's, it's better than nothing that we've had for four. I guess four home games or whatever we've had three home games on what we've had at home, but um, so that'll be a you know a motivation for our kids. I think just to be able to have their family there and and be with their family after a game, um, and, and again play for your, play for your peoples. I think you know I think that's always a big time motivation uh, when your your family can come watch you play and you want to put on a show when that happens. Pat, if I could ask another question about Jordan, when you're recruiting him, what what, what do you just see in his? personality and his, his mental makeup that made you think he could be a, a quick learner and a, and, a, and a contributor as a freshman? You know, you never, you know, you never know. We knew he was a talented player, but you, you know, you don't know about all the, the, uh, I guess the external things about just the way, he, the way he learns. I mean, you know, you only have so many visits with, a, with a prospect and uh, you don't have a whole lot of time to talk football or get him on the board or, um, but, you know, it's different guys that, you know, even, you know, serve us on defense and, and, and young guys have, have done it before, but he's just a special kid. He's, he's humble. Um, you know, you, you never see that guy get too high or get too low. He stays the same, uh, even keel and, you know, very similar to what Joey, Joey yelling at. I mean, that guy's like this, um, you know, he can turn the ball over. He's going to come right back and go. And, 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 you know, Jordan is the same way. Um, and, you know, he's just got to continue to do what he's doing and just focus on what his job is. Um, and, and that's what he's done so far. Pat, you lamented sort of the lack of competition in some position groups. I'm curious, is the offensive line one of those where you don't maybe have as much competition as you would like, so you can maybe plug guys in when you're not getting the results you want? Sometimes, and again, you know, maybe we just got to do a better job playing those guys. I mean, I think Matthew Gonsalves is the guy. You saw Owen Drix a week ago. I wish he'd got more snaps in there just to get him going. Um, and um, you know, Jake, you know, really had, you know, a couple of days off and he wasn't as clean as we wanted him to be. And, and that's tough when you go play, play a front four like you're going to play in Miami. It's tough when you go play a front four you're going to face this weekend um, to not be 100% or, you know, um, or practice enough to, to get really good and be sound and solid inside. Um, but no, offensive line, I mean, we've got some guys that we feel comfortable in and there's some young guys that, you know, just, it's one of those things when you talk about a cohesive group and, you know, if there's one position, you can rotate receivers and tailbacks. Um, but there's probably, if I had to pick two positions, you really don't want to rotate too much is that quarterback position uh, and your offensive line. I mean, those guys get used to playing together and you'd like to, you know, ride your horse all the way to the end with, uh, with your five hogs. But we've got some guys that can go in and, and do some things. And, and you sometimes see it in some of our extra packages, whether, you know, it was Blake Zabovic last week that, uh, that looked really good during practice with what he was doing. And, um, you know, so there's some young guys that are just going to learn and give them roles where they can, you know, partake in those, those certain situations and, and gain some confidence and, and give the coaches some confidence in what they're doing as well. Uh, uh, Sibley some... to play a little bit more on the Saturday, Pat? Say that again, Jerry. Sibley. Do you expect Sibley to get more reps? You know, I think so. I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see how he practices this week. Um, we know that uh, that position, the running back position, has been by committee. Um, and, you know, he obviously started the game off, and, you know, we'll see how he practices this week. But I'm happy with Todd and the way he's – you know, his cuts, you know, the way he's reading stuff. And, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, next week you'll be like, hey, why is he in there too much? Or um, So, you know, we'll see how they practice this week. And, we, you know, we're still looking for guys to, to step up and, and, and make something happen, uh, not only at the line of scrimmage, but as we break into the secondary. Alan, you had a question. We're going to make you be the uh, final question of the session. Go ahead. Pat, you've had some pretty notable successes against some top five type opponents in your time here. Is there anything you can put to that, whether, you know, outside of X's and O's and personnel, but maybe from a mindset or a motivational standpoint that's allowed you had to have some of that success? You know, I wish I could tell you I had my magic, my magic wand underneath here, but it's not here today. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's no magic to it. It's, it's getting your guys prepared mentally and physically. That's my job every week. And as I told our guys yesterday, I guess I didn't have you prepared mentally, physically enough to, to, to get that win down on the road. And we know an ACC road game is, is a tough deal. Uh, they're never easy. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to play better on the road. But, you know, the motivation is, is you know, I hope they're all, you know, you know self-motivated, you know, intrinsic motivation, if you want to call it, where they, they you know, they're playing for somebody, they're playing for a cause, and, and they, want to, they want to, you know, put good stuff on tape. And I think that's the, the biggest motivation is to go out and win 
and, and you be the guy that, that got things done, you know, structurally, fundamentally, um, and production wise. Coach, thank you. And thanks. Yeah, one more. And one more. EJ's, he must have a date today or something. Lunch date. Anybody got anything else? I got one, if you don't mind. For you, Jerry. Um, show. I just wanted to ask you about uh, the two local kids that are starting for Notre Dame, Hainsey and Heinis. How, how, how are they playing from what you've seen on video? Really good. Um, you know, Hainsey obviously playing, you know, the right tackle spot is physical. Um, I think his backup is Josh Lug, who, you know, has got five starts. And I might add this, you know, I didn't say this, but their old line is about as good as old line you're going to face. Uh, they've got 129 career starts up front. I don't know if I've ever seen 129 combined career starts. So they have a veteran old line and that's why they're running it a little bit more. And I'm sure we'll see some RPOs and some of those pop passes somewhere with as talented as their tight ends are on, on some of the run game, you know, uh, and the run play action pass. So, you know, we'll work our tail off this week to make sure that stuff doesn't happen. But uh, uh, Haines, is a good football player. Lug is a good football player. Um, you know, if you look at, you know, Josh Lug, again, as, as, as good as he is, he's, he's backing up over there, which is amazing. Um, and, uh, and then Haines, is, or excuse me, um, uh, Heinish is, is doing a nice job at, uh, at the D tackle spot. You know, they rotate a lot of guys up front but he's a starter. He's tough and physical and, and smart. He reads box wells, uh, box well. Um, you know, he's a really good football player that, you know, they got a bunch of four and five star football players on that team. And, you know, I added up the 129 starts. You guys should add up all the, the stars they got, um, but they're, they're deep and, and physical. And like I said, they're big. I think they're, you know, I look at some of their depth chart and some of the, I think they have all their freshmen or maybe their freshman year in high school, heights and weights, because uh, you always walk out there and say, that guy ain't 6'2", he's 6'4". Um, so, I, you know, I'm going to see if Kelly will give us some exact heights and weights on these guys, because they look bigger than sometimes the, the numbers tell you. Coach, thank you for that bonus time. Free of charge, I might add. Free. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks, Coach. Thank you thank all you. for joining us. Put it on my bill, EJ.